As a professional, he has seven bouts, seven victories, all seven coming by way of knockout. Wearing black with red and representing Guayania, Puerto Rico, Thomas y Caballeros, Carlos Purín Caraballo. Trunks here are good. Trunks here are good. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dress room. I want to remind you, protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands. Acuérdense, quiero una pelea limpia. Dios los bendigas. Look at the tail of the tape for this one, Steve. Yeah, one thing that stands out, Jesus Martinez, 35 years old, going up against the youngster in Carlos Caraballo, listed at age 22. Martinez has the experience ring-wise, the most experienced fighter that Carlos Caraballo will be going up against. Martinez, the Colombian, the, the, the camouflage trunks, is 24-3 and three with 12 KOs. Caraballo, the Puerto Rican in black, perfect, 7-0, 7 KOs. And as you can see early on, a battle of southpaws. One note about Jesus Martinez, the record might be better than the actual fighter. He's been KO'd twice. That came two and three fights ago against Louis Neri, who was a bantamweight champion. But for, Neri? Yeah, Louis Neri, and then oh, also okay. Jose Martinez. And keep in mind, his last bout for Martinez, he knocked out Louis De La Hose, whose record was one and fifteen. So they went on that low calorie diet there. And most of his fights have been in Colombia. For Martinez, who served in the military, and his nickname is Argento, the sergeant. You know, I've spoken to matchmakers that have signed Colombian fighters before, and they'll tell you there's two ways Colombian fighters go. They all have big records. They all have high knockout ratios. But there's still a part of their records that is very, very flimsy in a sense. The matchmaking and the depth isn't very, very strong. Some guys pan out. Some guys don't. Caraballo, promoted by Miguel Cotto, nicknamed Purin, which is on the back of his trunks. I asked him, what does that mean? I don't know. They just gave it to me when I was a kid. And they just, that's what everybody calls me. Love it. Strong left hand is what I've been told about Caraballo. His weapon of choice on the knockouts. And that his development is what they like yeah, about him, talking to the Kodo people, so that he takes his time. He's not a young fighter who comes out and rushes, and you can see that here in the first. Yeah, he looks good. Nice stance, not squared up. You can only see one shoulder blade, which for a southpaw would be the right hand. Steps well with his jab, moves forward with a nice slide step. I also like the fact his chin is down. You love that, right? I love that. Well, you've got to have your chin down because you're going to get hit in this game, and you don't want that whiplash effect, what I call the Pez dispenser. The Pez dispenser? Right. When your head jerks up, <laughs> and, and if your eyes can see the arena lights above you, that is the Pez dispenser. That generally is not good. Listen, you can prevent... Every time I work with you, you always come up with something what I different. Do. It's the what I do. The Pez dispenser. I never thought I'd get that one. I've used that before. Not with me. I feel just... <laughs> But, I, I, but it makes sense. I understand exactly what you're talking about. Feel out round between Caraballo and Martinez. Las Vegas working our way towards the main event, which is Jaime Munguia, Liam Smith, at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Second round, this is scheduled for eight. Super Bantamweights. You know, Beto, looking at Cotto Bias, like any other young fighter, when you first size him up for the first time, you say to yourself, how do you judge a guy? Number one thing I look for, are they good fundamentally and technically? Do they have their hands and feet in the right place? Is their alignment of the shoulders correct? And do they step well with their punches while also keeping proper distance? Early on, Cotto Bayo certainly showing really good form. This guy looks like a very good world school jump fighter. Trying to get out of the corner, Caraballo cuts him off. Goes a one-two. Doubles up the jab, follows that left. 
and you could see starting to ramp up the heat just a little bit, trying to quicken the tempo. And going back to my earlier point, he's 7-0 seven with 7 knockouts, but that could be very deceiving. Yep. That could be all about very, very soft matchmaking. But eyeballing him for the first time, this this young man certainly looks like he's a very, very well-taught, well-trained boxer. Carlos Jose Caraballo, Guayanina, Puerto Rico. Last fight for him was in April of this year, a fourth-round stoppage. Before that, he stopped his opponent, Yaxo Moreto, who had a record of 1-8 in the fifth round. So this is his third fight of 2018. And this is the first of as he moves him back. Martinez is the first opponent that Caraballo is fighting with a winning right. record. So they're stepping him up as far as experience-wise. Yeah. Solid left hand. Moves back Martinez on the ropes. Most of this round is the Colombian. Yeah, Fainting like, with that jab. Yeah, and the other thing that I love about Cotabaya, look at his front foot. He never gets too close or too deep to his opponent. Does a very nice job of giving himself space and doesn't smother his opponent. A lot of young fighters will actually get into their own phone booth and they'll go chest to chest with the guy. This, this young Kato Bio is doing a really nice job of creating space and then keeping that distance. You can tell the work that he does in the gym. Right. Like, like you've been talking about the shadow boxing, how important it is for guys to do it. Well, the guy that really impresses me at the gym that we go to a lot, Legends, is Dimitri Bivol. He gives an absolute clinic on how to control spacing and distance on a heavy bag. And I, I think this man certainly is putting on a very nice clinic tonight. Solid round for the Puerto Rican Carlos Caraballo against Jesus Martinez on the night of Munguia and Smith. Yes. Like a good press -up clip on him. So... This kid has a following down there, according to the people from Photo Promotions. No, and Beto, we like other sports. You cover other sports. Sometimes when you don't know much about a young prospect or a young recruit, sometimes you just give them the eyeball test. Do they look like a ball player, and can they play? Do they throw the ball a certain way? Does the ball come off the bat a certain way? With Kyle Bayo, you look at him technically. You look at his stance. You look at the way he steps with his punches. He's able to put a little heat with that back foot as he throws that left. He looks like a guy that might be going places. Uh, if you're looking at him right now, see, say you didn't know who this guy was, and you're walking in as a member of the media for a fight, would you be thinking that this kid is 7-0? Well, oh? The first thing I'd be saying is, who's this guy? This guy might yeah. be pretty good. He doesn't look like he's only had seven pro fights. That right there, getting yep. in and getting out, yeah. right? But if you watch his front foot, he makes sure it's never too close to the type of punch he wants to throw. Now, obviously, if you're going to dig to the body, you need to edge a little bit closer. But if you're on the outside with the type of left hands he's been throwing over the top, you want to give yourself a little bit of airspace. One thing I would like to see him mix in as he certainly established that jab and then the left hand is also the cleanup right hook, which is a very key weapon. It's really a blind punch against most fighters. So throw that right hook after, after the left. Left, left, right body shot. Another body shot with the right hand. And now he gets in close and he starts to bang downstairs. He has a really good sense of distance. In the black is Carlos Caraballo. 7-0, seven, 7 KOs, who just joined us right now. Guayanilla, Puerto Rico. And to with him yesterday at the weigh-in, he had a bit of a presence to him. Yeah. I'm asking him a couple questions you know, uh, for the broadcast sheet. How tall are you? What's your reach? He just had that little presence. Like, even before the weigh-in, when guys are super hungry, they're dried out. He just had like, yeah? Mm -hmm. Like, it didn't seem like anything was too big for him. He's fighting in Vegas for the first time. And Martinez has been on the retreat after that first round. The fight being controlled by Carlos Caraballo putting. You get the red gloves. As the third round winds down. 
scheduled for a super bantamweight division from the Hard Rock Hotel Casino in Las Vegas. Good. With a good left hand. Really good fundamentals from Kyle Bio. Thanks to everybody watching the Facebook stream right now or wherever you might be watching. Appreciate the tweets coming in. Duran Sports, Steve UCN Live. Got one man watching at Olive Garden while he's out there. Oh, save us some breadsticks. Exactly. Never ending, right? But the Rand, Steve Kim. And you see Miguel Cotto right in the middle of your screen. He's watching his young prospect, Carlos Caraballo, look good through three rounds. Good left hand landed by Carlos. Well, that is a sharp left hand. And speaking of Cotto, another prospect that I've seen a few times this year that I think has an upside is Daniel Zoria. Yeah, yeah, I like He's that kid. Fighter. So uh, I've always thought about Puerto Rico. They're going to produce three things, always. Rum, beautiful women, and boxers. Wepa. <laughs> That's a real kid. You talk about flair. He's got attitude. He's got charisma. And he puts on a show. I like him. I've seen two, him twice. Yeah, and Jesus Martinez, we talked about his record, how maybe a little bit built up, but this is why the matchmakers chose him. They wanted an experienced guy that was going to give him, one of my favorite terms, professional resistance. This is a great experience for Carlos Caraballo, especially if Martinez is able to extend this into the second half of the fight. Matchmakers will tell you, we love the first round knockout from a highlight perspective. From a developmental perspective, they want to see if guys can swim in deep waters. Well, you get quality sparring. At least you should be getting quality sparring. You get good work, but until you can actually take that headgear off and transfer it oh. to a ring on a professional stage, it's a different story. Well, it's like what Barry Switzer one time told a lot of his backups that would score touchdowns when it was 50 to nothing. Son, can you do it when the band's still playing? It, it's a totally different thing with eight-ounce gloves in front of a live audience where the bullets are live. So, you see the wear on the face of Martinez, very game, 35-year-old Colombian. That professional resistance, you say, though, that's a great term because a fight like this for Carvalho, he's going to learn much more about what his limitations can be and what things he can exploit. You know, you talk to any great fighter that had a championship-level career, whether it's Miguel Cotto, Oscar De La Hoya, they will tell you that the fights that were most instructive as they look back and were most valuable for their development are the ones they didn't look good, are the ones that were very, very tough, but they had to grind it through the late rounds. Another solid round for the Puerto Rican Caraballo. We're done with four. Viva. Viva. So the amateur pedigree for Caraballo is out there. You see it. You see why Cotto signed him. You see why they like him. He's solid. Yeah. He really is. Now, I don't know if his punching power is as good as his early record, seven up, seven down, really suggests. But from a technical standpoint, you just look at him. The way he steps with that jab, his stance, chin tucked in. Uh, I, I think it's been a very, very good, solid effort tonight. Against a fighter who's not exactly oh, giving him an easy target. And Martinez. Oh, Carlos Caraballo here in Las Vegas. He's got the black with the red gloves. 22 years old. And at the age, Steve, you also start wondering about the punching power as he starts developing those man muscles. Yeah, different guys will age differently, and we don't know exactly at what time he's going to reach his physical ceiling. But this much is clear. Kato Bayo punches solid. Uh, I don't know if he has the heavy hands of Miguel Cotto or the bone-rattling power of Cheeto Trinidad. And the truth be told, very few guys do. I think at the very least, he's a very sharp puncher. Precise with that left. Oh, and that, that was a good left hand right off the rope. That may have stunned Martinez. A little bit of body work. They've been telling Carvalho between rounds in his corner. Start using the body. Because Martinez finding himself on the ropes more. Well, you get the sense he's starting to bend a little bit. 
been very game, been very durable. But now you see Kyle Bio starting to really close in steadily with a lot of pressure and heavy handedness. That's another thing you want to see from young prospects the way that they close fights. Seven and zero, seven KOs. Carlos Caraballo. Another thing that's impressive about this young Puerto Rican, Beto, his pacing. He knows yeah. how to fight at a professional pace. So that the world class level, if he develops that far, most of these fights, they're going to go into the back half. If he starts to become a 10, 12 round fighter, many of these fights are going to become more marathons than they are sprints. Another solid round for Carlos Caraballo, the Puerto Rican. Looking good in Las Vegas on the night of Munguia and Smith as they fight for the championship later on tonight. This round, your winner by TKO and still undefeated from Guayanilla, Puerto Rico.